Patrick Bonrat here, orthopaedic surgeon from the Brisbane Hip Clinic. Uh, this presentation is about osteoarthritis of the hip joint. Uh, so osteoarthritis is the by far most common reason for people to come and see me. So I've created this video for you to understand the condition a little bit better so that you might understand a little bit more about how I assess your hip joint and the features which will determine the recommendations that I make. So this presentation is going to go through the definition of osteoarthritis, what the what the condition actually means, uh, what we what we are referring to when we talk to you about osteoarthritis of the joint. Um, I'm going to go through some of the symptoms of osteoarthritis, what you should expect when you have the condition, um, some of the associated conditions that we see, and also what we call the differential diagnoses. They're the conditions that mimic osteoarthritis. Um, and then finally, some of the imaging features on X-ray MRI scan, and also the visual appearance of osteoarthritis. So osteoarthritis of the hip joint is a degenerative condition, uh, which means that it is the result of microscopic damage over a really long period of time. So um, think of it a little bit like the uh, accumulation of, of micro damage within the cartilages of the joint over many, many years. So this condition, um, in quite a lot of people um, will be completely silent and will be flying under the radar um, with very little symptoms or sometimes even no symptoms at all um, until they get to a point where they have um, enough damage over a threshold uh, of accumulated damage where they then start to experience some pain. Um, so um, it's not unusual for someone to come to me and they would have um, very little symptoms and then um, with a, a fairly minor or um, uh, quite a, a, a trivial event, um, they start to get some discomfort. And indeed, it's not that event that probably caused their arthritis at all. It's the fact that it's been accumulating over a really long period of time um, and they've just been blissfully unaware of it. So this is an x-ray of a person with right hip osteoarthritis and the affected hip is on the viewer's left. So the first feature that we see in advanced osteoarthritis is the loss of normal joint space thickness. Um, and so what we see is a reduction in the thickness of the cartilage between the ball and the socket uh, represented by progressive wear of the surfaces on each side of the joint. The second feature that we see in advanced osteoarthritic wear is the formation of spurs or what we term osteophytes about the joint. And these are little bony growths that occur on the edges of both the ball and the socket. And so um, these would be one of the reasons why a person with advanced osteoarthritis uh, typically has a, a very stiff hip joint um, and has uh, functional problems like, for instance, putting on shoes and socks because the ball of the hip joint is prevented from rolling smoothly within the socket as a result of those spurs. The other feature that we would typically see with osteoarthritic wear is the formation of cysts. Um, and the cysts can form both within the bone, uh, which we call a geode, or alternatively form adjacent to a cartilage tear called a labrum, um, which is called a paralabral cyst. Now these cysts are not dangerous. They probably don't represent uh, a condition which would cause, the cysts themselves don't actually cause pain, um, nor are they cancerous or dangerous in any way. Um, what they do represent, however, is that there's a degree of wear within the joint. And that degree of wear, um, particularly in the formation of geodes, is usually fairly significant. So we usually see bony cysts uh, adjacent to the joint when the wear is quite significant. Often the geodes are not really all that easily seen in an x-ray. And so on an MRI scan, they're much more obvious. And so here's an example of a geode from an MRI scan. So a common scenario that I would see 
in clinic is where a person comes to me with an MRI scan that demonstrates advanced osteoarthritic wear uh, in association also with a degenerative labral tear. Um, and so here's a, an MRI scan demonstrating just that. Uh, this person has advanced arthritic wear with complete loss of joint space thickness, um, together with the other characteristic features like geode cyst formation within the, um, within the bone uh, and also uh, bony spur osteophyte formation. Uh, there's also an acetabular labral tear, and that's I, uh, highlighted here by the red arrow. And so the question that I'd be asked is, uh, can't you just trim that labral cartilage uh, to be able to provide some symptom relief from the catching that I'm experiencing uh, on motion of the hip joint? And the, the short answer is that's um, consistently very ineffective, uh, and it's not a successful way of managing the joint at all. Um, and the reason being is that whilst the labral cartilage is important and does uh, represent a structure that can be contributing to pain, it is only one small portion of the wider degree of damage within the joint. The analogy I give to people is a little bit like uh, thinking of a, 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 a shrub within a forest um, and just managing that small portion is really not going to make that much difference. So what are the symptoms of osteoarthritis? The primary features of osteoarthritis that most people would come with to me with are a combination of both pain and stiffness. And it's typically the pain that drives a person towards further management. Location of pain in osteoarthritis is typically groin based, um, but as the wear starts to become more severe, people will typically experience what's called referred pain, where it's um, more difficult to be able to differentiate and localise where the pain is truly coming from. And the very typical presentation of osteoarthritis at the hip joint is a combination of groin pain that then radiates into the thigh and into the knee, um, and on some occasions also onto the outside aspect of the calf. Whilst pain from the hip joint can be felt in the buttock, it's very uncommon for the pain to be high up on the uh, top part uh, of the pelvis. Um, and likewise, um, hip pain is generally not felt on the outer aspect of the hip. Uh, these are both likely to be manifestations of other conditions with, which can sometimes mimic os hip osteoarthritis. So this is the uh, image that we would take at time of a hip arthroscopy procedure, which is a, a keyhole minimally invasive camera style operation inside a, a hip joint. And um, so this is what the inside of the hip joint looks like um, when we do that procedure. Uh, the ball of the hip joint, the femoral head, is in the top part of the image in the socket of the hip joint is in the uh, bottom right and between the two you can see that there's a cartilage that's got a small tear in it. That's the labral cartilage. Um, and so I think that uh, it's important to understand that hip osteoarthritis uh, isn't a condition where you have it or you don't have it. It's uh, more a condition uh, which is more like a grey scale where you can have grades of osteoarthritic wear. Uh, and so this person's got uh, a minimum of uh, cartilage wearing a small labral tear and they'll fare quite well from an arthroscopic procedure. Here's an image of a person also at arthroscopy who's got a little bit more advanced wear and you can see here that the cartilage on the edge of the socket next to the labrum uh, has now started to develop some uh, deep cracks within it. And uh, so this person likewise is likely to do pretty well so long as the rest of the uh, hip joint is in uh, uh, pretty good condition. So this person, by contrast, unfortunately, has more advanced arthritic wear, and you can see that there's some quite deep cracks within the cartilage on the ball of the hip joint, which are mechanically unstable and getting caught as the ball rolls inside the socket. So that the longer-term outcome for this person's uh, are probably not likely to be as favourable as the last two that you've just seen. 
I think, however, it's important to understand that the degree of cartilage wear that's seen within a hip joint, and also uh, in particular that seen on an X-ray or MRI scan, doesn't necessarily uh, correlate um, uh, in a linear way to the degree of symptoms that a person uh, might uh, experience. So it wouldn't be all that uncommon that we would see, for instance, people with quite advanced osteoarthritis wear on an X-ray or an MRI scan, but they might be functioning quite well with non-surgical measures, or and um, their function might be uh, might be quite good. They might be quite active um, with a minimum of pain. But the um, uh, converse, however, there may in fact be people with uh, lesser grades of wear with smaller patches of cartilage injury uh, who are finding things a little bit more difficult and do require um, more advanced treatment. So I suppose the take home point from this is that the degree of wear that's seen within the hip joint doesn't necessarily always correlate with the degree of symptoms. So some of the summary points from this presentation are that uh, the wearing that's seen in osteoarthritis is a slow accumulation of uh, cartilage degradation. Um, it is a condition which has uh, characteristic features on uh, X-ray and MRI scans, so it can be predicted uh, quite easily and diagnosed um, uh, quite accurately with those modalities. Clinically, osteoarthritis is characterised by uh, two main symptoms, that being pain and stiffness, the pain being the main feature which usually uh, drives someone towards further treatment. And the pain is typically located in the groin, thigh and knee, particularly in more advanced cases where uh, referred pain is seen. Osteoarthritis is a spectrum condition which uh, 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 is all the way through from the smallest amounts of wear through to the most significant, but the wear doesn't necessarily always correlate with the degree of symptoms or pain. So I hope that you found this presentation useful. Uh, if you would like to read any further around this topic, uh, there's lots of information on our website at brisbanehipclinic.com.au. Have a great day.